I, I noticed that every uh, every so often, a lot of people reach out to you because they have experienced the loss of a, of a parent. And mm -hmm. that's something you obviously, unfortunately, had to experience um, recently as well. So I'm just wondering, you know, now, um, you know, just how are you doing with that? How are you processing? I know it's something that never goes away, but yeah. just you what still, do you find do you yourself? Have, do you still have your parents? Yes, I still have both my parents. Yeah. It's something, it, the, the interesting thing about it is I, I, sometimes I get emotional, sometimes I don't. I, I'm sorry, I can't control it. Um, it is a loss like no other. And this is the thing, as a Black woman in America, you go through a lot of loss, right? But there's a level of loss of, of your mom in particular, because I still have my dad, so I don't know what that's like, but the loss of your mother in particular, you are acutely aware that you have to figure out how to mother yourself. And no one tells you that. Like, there's so many things that your mother tells you. Drink some water. Take a nap. Um, you're focusing on that too much. You bet you probably need to not let that become a thing. Or simple things like, it's going to be all right. You know, there's a there's something about it, it's going to be all right from your mother that's different than a, it's going to be all right from anybody else. It cannot be replicated. It cannot be duplicated. My father could say to me, it's going to be all right. And it's not the same. And as we know, life is about disappointment. We think that life is about celebration and wonderful things, but life is about disappointments more than the great stuff. So you're going to need a, It's going to be all right more than you need anything else in life. And I'm acutely aware that I'm never going to get that from the person I wanted the most from ever again. So I say to those of you that still have your mothers, cherish them. Because everything that she may do that annoyed you or why she owe me about this again, like all of that stuff is the things that you're going to miss. My mother used to come over like if I was in, my mother never called before she came over. So if I was doing <laughs> like, uh, you know, she like, I made you, this is your house, but it's my house. And she would come in, right. my dog. I was everything, like, oh my gosh. <laughs> everything, everything is my mother. So she would come in and I'd be like doing this. I'd be in the middle of this and my bedroom door would open and she'd come in and she'd come in bringing a, a bacon sandwich, <laughs> you know, I don't know if you ate today, here you go. And I'm like, but mom, I'm on with Jamil, I can't do this right now. It's so, it's little things like that, that would aggravate me in the moment that I would give everything I have if this door opened and she walked in right now. I wish that she would interrupt this right now. So I'm saying to all of you listening and I'm, I'm even though I'm always a blubbering mess, I, I am glad when people ask me about her one, because I want to honor my mother. Fran Hall was a real one. I want to honor her. But more I'm than that, friend. I'm a friend. More than yes. that, I want to give everyone that's listening um, a, a, a rallying cry to say, call your mother, go see your mother, spend time with your mother, tell your mother how you feel about her, record your mother speaking, start a conversation with her and hit voice record on your phone. You ain't even got to tell her you're doing it. Get, when she's in the kitchen doing something or walking through your house, videotape your mother because you're going to want to see her when she's gone. You're going to want to hear her when she's gone. Turn your recorder on and say, mom, tell me about your life. What was it like when you were my age? What was it like when you were five or 12 or whatever you remember and record it? Ask every question you always wanted to know because you feel like you're going to have them forever and you won't. So, yeah. No, that's good advice because um, I feel that way about my grandmother who I was very close to. I was like, I wish I'd have just, sometimes when you're, you're a kid and even as an adult, because you're so used to them being there to serve you, frankly, yeah. because they're your parent or your grandparent. Right. And I just, I wish I'd have just asked her more questions. I really wish I would have asked her about her life and, you know, not just about what she did, but what she went through, how she felt, how she processed emotionally what this was like because a lot of black women particularly of certain generations before us never got the space to be vulnerable That's and right. i wish i would have done that uh, luckily i've been able to do that a lot with my mother particularly Good. as i finish my memoir which she's a huge chunk of so i'm asking about family history and story Good. find out things about um my own mother's past and i was like you ain't need to share that but okay i'm gonna, rece <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna receive it because they were women first they were women they were, they were i was mothers, like oh yeah. yeah i don't know if i can take that but you i'm just gonna I, i'm it. just gonna receive it um you know a lot of people can relate to what you're going through and losing a parent also can relate to 
what you're going through with your dad as his as his caregiver. Yeah. Um, you made a very bold decision, understandable decision when you decided to walk away from community uh, to care uh, for your father. And I loved how you described it as like, that was the easiest it decision really in the world. But I know when you're in a caregiver role with a parent that that's entirely different than what you're used to. So how have you been able to handle that? You know, um... I, I honestly don't know any other way. Like I, I, I'm not somebody that could put my, my, my family in a home and walk away. I'm just not built like that. Um, and I've had my dad now, it'll be nine years in, um, in December that I've had him. And, um, you know, I think, wait a minute, it's eight or nine. I know it's 2012, it was 2012, so it'll be nine years. Um, I, I feel that it is what we all are supposed to do if we're able. And most of us are able, but again, you have to put someone else's needs above your own. Um, I am his sole caregiver, especially now that my mom's gone. It's just me and him. If he eats, if he, what he eats, when he sleeps, what clothes he wears, where he goes, all of that is my responsibility. And I take it as an honor to do that. It is, I say all the time, it is the, the, the toughest best thing I've ever done or the best tough thing that I've ever done. I have never had a regret. Um, I left community to do it. I took a lot of hits from the fans of community because I did it. They, a lot of people were very upset that I, I left that TV show. They just were very mad that I would no longer be playing Shirley. Um, and I don't care. <laughs> and I didn't care then um, because it was my dad and he needed me and it was the right thing to do. And I've lost out on opportunities now because I can't really, especially now that my mom is gone, I can't uh, pick up and just go away to Canada or somewhere else to to film a movie or a TV show for months at a time. I didn't even want to go to Ireland to do Disenchanted. Not I wanted to do Disenchanted, but being in Ireland for three months, I just felt like something could go wrong and something did. My mom passed while I was over there. So that those types of decisions have to be weighed you have to weigh every decision, like who's gonna watch him, who's gonna take care of him, what happens, like it's all of that, that's a part of it. And so instead of giving myself that agita in my chest because I made that decision, it's just better for me to stay close to him and make decisions mm. based on that. And I don't, I don't regret it. 